right, everyone, we'd like to welcome Scotty Scheffler to the Media Center here at the FedEx St. Jude Championship. Uh, Scotty's entering the FedEx Cup playoffs this week at number two um, and finished the regular season number two in the Comcast Business Tour Top 10. Um, Scotty, two wins on the season, 15 top 10s, um, an, an impressive run. I guess just some opening thoughts from you on um, how the regular season went and how it's primed you for uh, another playoffs run here. Yeah, I've had a, had a pretty good year so far. Um, very proud of the consistency that I've had throughout the year, and um, I'm excited for the playoffs. I feel like my game's in a really good spot, and yeah, ready to go. And we were just saying you have two weeks off entering entering the playoffs. How how was that break for you? And and I guess what if anything were you really focused on game wise to, to get you ready for this this three week stretch? I mean, focused on on rest. I would say most importantly um, after the major season that we had and having all the elevated events and. With me playing good golf, being in contention a lot of the weeks and having some decent chances to win definitely wears on you mentally. And so I was pretty tired after the Open, so just took a nice, you know, good eight, I think it was eight days off where I didn't didn't touch a club, just took pure rest and um, started practicing beginning of last week to get ready for this week. And, yeah. Perfect. All right, we'll just go right into questions. If you just have a question, raise your hand, and we will uh, we'll get a microphone over to you. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys yeah. want to talk about? We'll start with, we'll start with, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll start with Mitchell right here. Hey, Scotty. Pearson Cootie gave you a shout-out last week during his tour, tour-bound press conference as he got declared tour-bound on the Corner Ferry Tour. What, um, he said he's been trying to emulate you this year and be finished number one on the points list. So what, what is it, what's it mean to you to hear that, and what's it like for you to, what's it like for you to look up, to, what's it like for Pearson to look up to you already as you're such a young player still? What's it like to have someone look up to you on the Corner Ferry Tour, and what do you remember, what do you remember about Pearson's game? Well, first, about Pearson's game, I remember him being really good, um, him and his brother. They're both really talented players, and, um, you know, it's good to see them having success. I think Parker also made the playoffs, and so um, I love seeing, seeing Longhorns have success out here on tour, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice to have people look up to you. Um, I don't really know what I would, you know, be doing to receive something like that, but, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll try and keep doing my best, and, you know, hopefully I won't, won't make too many mistakes, but... Yeah, uh, I mean, I feel like the, the Texas Longhorn family out here on tour is pretty tight, and Jordan was one of those guys that I also look up to when I was growing up, and um, he was always a little bit ahead of me in terms of age and, you know, kind of golf development, and when I got out here on tour, he was a really good guy for me to be able to bounce stuff off of, and it's been, you know, kind of the same thing, just open-door policy with those guys, the, the, both the Cooties and Cole. Um, whenever they have questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them, and um, no, that's something that's important. When you, when you start out here on tour, it's, there really is so much to learn. Um, and a lot of it you can learn by experience. And I mean, a lot of it you just got to ask questions. I mean, there's just random stuff about where you want to stay, where you want to eat. There's, there's so many things that, that go into how you want to plan your weeks out here on tour. And when I first started, I had, I had no idea what I was doing. And so it was really good to, be, to have some older guys that I was able to bounce stuff off of. And you know, hopefully I can be a little bit of a sounding board for the younger guys coming up as well. Cool. Right over here, right? Hey, Scotty, Colin Cody with WRG here in Memphis. Um, what are your thoughts about the course and how it's playing today, especially, you know, not knowing the conditions moving forward this week? Yeah, we've gotten a lot of rain so far this week, and I've heard it's been kind of a rainy rainy season here recently, so the rough is a bit thicker than I remember it being. Um, gotten some really, really nasty lies around the greens, and so that's a little bit of a change for this year that um, – I mean, the rough has always been pretty penal here, but it seems to be a lot thicker than it is in years past. But other than that, the golf course provides the same challenges. You got to hit it really good out here. And when you're in position, you can score. But the second you start hitting the ball offline, you're going to be penalized pretty severely for those mistakes, um, especially with a lot of the water holes. And then I mean, Bermuda rough going into Bermuda greens is always a challenge, just judging how that ball is going to come out. And obviously your best finish coming in 2020, um, missing the cut last year. With the rest, the last couple of weeks, um, do you think that's going to help your game? I'm sure hoping it's going to help my game. Um, I, this is a course that I really enjoy playing. I haven't had as much success at this place as I have as some other courses on tour, and so I don't really know why that is, but I'm definitely hoping to, hoping to change that going into this week. Hey, Doug. As it relates to the next three weeks, uh, what have you learned about, about this, this segment from last year what did last year teach you I think 
I'm treating this year more as a trying to build up for Eastlake. I feel like if I go out and have a great week at Eastlake, with the position I'm in now in the FedEx Cup, I can't fall too far away from the lead. And so um, I'm kind of trying to build my way into that tournament and make sure I'm rested just because, I mean, it's the playoffs, the fields are really good, and you don't want to be tired going into the, the weekend at Eastlake just because the, those are going to be the two most important or the four most important days of the playoffs. I mean, it, I could win both these tournaments and I still only have a two-shot lead at Eastlake. And so um, it's a different format and just trying to be ready for that tournament. What, what, uh, how much do you think about last year? What, what do you think happened? And in general, um, is, it, is it underrated how hard it is to play with a big lead? Can you uh, speak to how personally you feel about Jay being able to come back, how important that is, and, and maybe how... I don't know, your, your sense of your peers, their, uh, uh, I, I guess, uh, happiness that, that Jay's back and is okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I went to the player meeting yesterday and I realized I hadn't seen Jay in, in quite a bit of time. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely good to have him back. I think the tour's got a long way to go. Um, but it's always nice having Jay back in person. You know, guys when they want to, can have face-to-face -face time with him. He's, he's always available, and you know, he's doing, doing the best that he can to make sure that he's getting as much player input as possible. Did, did, did you have any sense that, uh, you know, that he might not come back, that, that you know, what he was dealing with was... I mean, was I, I don't think anybody knows what he's been dealing with at home. So, you know, as, as a person, we're just glad to see him back out here doing, doing what he loves to do, and um, you know, hopefully he'll be doing that for a long time. Hey, I'm just going to go right over here. Oh. <laughs> Thanks so much, Scotty. You mentioned the tour still has a long way to go. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. Does that mean in terms of explaining the deal to players or the details of it? I was wondering... If you could just expand on that a bit. Yeah, I mean, well, you have the framework agreement, which nobody's you know entirely sure what that means. Um, and then you got whatever they're working towards. And the position where I'm sitting now, it just seems like they got a long way to go in that sense to where you know, there's still really not much to say. And there's, I mean, we, we still don't really have a great idea as to what, what, what is going on right now. Right over here. Scotty, you're a proud Longhorn. Talk about the, the, your program joining the Southeastern Conference. Talk about the development of those collegiate golfers joining such a proud golf conference as the Southeastern Conference. Yeah, I feel like I feel like at the University of Texas, like I, I kind of talked a little bit about it earlier, was it's a tight family out here. When I first came out on tour, there was a lot of, a lot of guys that I knew from either when I was being recruited or um, from when I was on the team. And I have great relationships with, with all the guys that have graduated from, from University of Texas. And, um, yeah, it should be a fun experience for, for the guys. I mean, it'll be fun for football. It'll be fun for basketball. It's, it's exciting for me as a fan to be able to have that. And then any competition is good competition in, in golf. And, um, you know, Texas and Oklahoma have both been, been great golf schools, I think, for, for a good bit of time. And um, we'll be joining in a lot of other great programs there in the SEC. Okay, just going to go right over here. Hey, Scotty, Matt and Field with uh, Action News 5 here in Memphis. How do you compare, you've won one major, how do you compare the motivation to win the FedEx Cup playoffs compared to, I guess, the other three majors that you haven't won? Does it drive you in the same way? We should have time for a couple more. It's right here and then Sean. Hey, Scotty. Um, with the playoff criteria for this week going from 125 to 70, has there been any reaction from you or other players regarding some of those big names that aren't here this week as well as the changes to the playoff format? So you're asking for like a reaction, like what? yeah. Has there been any just different feeling this week with some of those guys not here, as well as the field going from 125 to 70 this year? I'd say it's a little different with it only being 70. Um, I think it would be more rewarding for the guys that have played the best throughout the year. With with the changes to the point system, or I guess not changes, with the way the point system is, with there being I think 2,000 points for a win this week. Um, it gives a little bit more of a reward to the guys that have played the most consistent golf over the year. But it is strange with there only being 70 guys making the playoffs. So we'll see how it, how it pans out. I mean, the FedEx Cup has changed so much since it came into, uh, into part of our tour. And, you know, it's a fun way to finish off the year. It's exciting for us. And, you know, it's the season-long race. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. All right, guys. Just right about here to Jonathan. 
Hey, Scotty. Uh, I, I saw you working with a, a new putter yesterday. What's the experience been like working with it over the last couple of days and anything in particular that you like about it? So, the guys at TaylorMade have done a lot of work um, for me with the putter. Um, I, I've always liked the visual of that spider putter, but I really just did not like the feel. Um, that's something we discussed, the, kind of the feel and the, I've always struggled with putters that have a lot of weight kind of in the backside of it. And this one's a bit different than a lot of the spiders that they made and the weight's more in the front. So it has the feel of the, of a blade putter that I like, but it also has a lot of that visual on the top where it's easier for me to line up. You know, it, it feels like at times this year, I've hit a lot of good putts that have gone, gone right up to the edge and not gone in. And maybe it could be my alignment. You know, if your alignment's a half inch off, the ball lips out instead of going in the middle or um, lips out instead of lips in, that the margins in this game are so small. And so it's something that I feel really comfortable with where the balance point is on this putter. And um, I'm excited to try it out this week. All right, we're just gonna finish right here with Bob. Scotty, things really seemed to change for you. Your career really took off after playing in that Ryder Cup at Whistling Straits two years ago. Is, is it too simple to say that 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 really gave you a boost being, you know, you were sort of viewed as the last guy on. It's amazing how much different it is now. You're, now you're the first guy on basically. So just curious if, when you think back to that, how much that meant and, and if it really did sort of give you an impetus into 2022 and what you've all accomplished. I mean, it would be pretty hard to argue that it didn't have much of an effect. <laughs> um, I would say that it, I mean, it definitely had an extreme impact on my career. I mean, I would say that the Ryder Cup is the most pressure that I've ever felt as a golfer. Um, some, of my, some of my buddies, we were at, a, at the lake last weekend, and um, some of my buddies were asking me about the Ryder Cup, but if it really was that intense, then I was like, I mean, when I stepped up on the first tee in the first match, I literally could not feel my arms. And I've been really nervous before, and I was really nervous at the Masters, but I could still feel my arms. When I teed up at the Ryder Cup, literally could not feel my arms. And so... A, a lot of different things go into that kind of catapulting me. One of them being having the vote of the guys on the team. There's a lot of guys in that team room that wanted me to be on that team. And when you get that vote of confidence from your peers is, is something that, um, you know, really means a lot to me, just having that belief. And, you know, it wasn't like I was friends with the captain and he picked me to be on that team. You know, I had a lot of the guys on that team that believed in me as a player and thought I had the talent to be on that team. And I went out there and, you know, I, I played like I deserved to be on that team. Um, and so having their vote was really important. And then in terms of being in that extreme pressure, it's different preparing to be in that pressure. It's different when you go home and you're like, okay, this is exactly how I feel under the most extreme pressure I can be under. And now I go back knowing exactly what I feel like and I can imagine myself being in that scenario and I know what the feels are and now I can go back and prepare for them. And it's definitely something that has had an extreme impact on my career, being able to play in that tournament and play well. All right. Scotty, thank you for the time. Best of luck this week. All right. Thanks, y'all.